ladies and gentlemen, I'm ending the vlog. <clears throat> the summer series of the vlog, of course. Yeah, it's still vacation, I can drink, you know. So, the previous summer I made uh, the summer series of the vlog for the first time. Then we traveled around in Sweden and a lot of you guys, maybe there are some new viewers, followed my videos. I made like 30 videos in 33 days. It was pretty insane tempo, but uh, also a lot of fun. I have realized over like the two last years that uh, I don't really have the capacity to uh, engage and commit fully into making YouTube videos being a dad, a family man, and having a full-time job at the same time. So I had to do something. But in the summer, when we, have a, when we go for a vacation, my full-time job is out of the picture, and I can put much bigger effort into making YouTube videos. And um, I'm trying to use that over the last two, two summers as much as I can. And therefore, the result was the summer series of the vlog. I have realized that when my work is gone, I still like to uh, having to put in an effort every day, keeping my mind sharp, uh, doing the daily grinding of making daily videos, which is hard and fun at the same time. Um, and you always learn a lot doing it. The trip is done, we're back home. Uh, my dear wife, Lynn, she has been working this entire week. I've been... Uh, this is my final vacation week. I've been alone with the kids, traveled home to my hometown for a few days, hanging out with friends. Uh, since I was alone with the kids, I didn't even try to make videos because it's pretty exhausting having them all day. Uh, they have, uh, both kids have very, they make up their mind about something and they want to do it. So it's a lot of negotiations all day. So I'm kind of tired in the evenings. So I just focused on hanging out with them. No camera, it's been great. When we got home from the trip, we had one day, uh, the Friday, and then it was a wedding that we were going to on the Saturday. And it was a great wedding. During the wedding, I lost my Ray-Ban. I had him for two years, it was like $200 Ray-Ban with polarized glass. So I got some new ones. Oakley, Holbrook, with the prism lens, same as I have on my bicycle uh, glasses. So I really like them, so I'm gonna use them for the rest of this video, just because I feel like it. Cheers. The purpose of this video is to sum things up. Uh, this entire summer, the four weeks that we spent in the car and in Italy. So first off, how much money did this cost? <laughs> how much did this trip really cost? I had some speculations before about how much it would cost, but now I have some actual numbers. So we, I'm going to take this in Swedish crowns and then you can recalculate it if you like to. We prepaid uh, in like April before the summer every single night and the ferry to Sweden on the way back home that cost like 22 and a half thousand. So let's put the numbers up here. Then I speculated in that we would pay like 5,000 crowns in uh, diesel and that was very accurate because we drove 6,000 no, 6, kilometers so we burned about uh, 5,000 there uh, and then we had the tolls, the food, other expenses um, we went to Gardaland for one day oh, that is like 2,000 just for one day so I would say that we spent maybe almost 20,000 uh, on food, experiences, uh, yeah, tolls, plus gas. So with gas, like 25,000 maybe. During these four weeks, we drove 6,000 kilometers, as I mentioned. We spent like 85, <laughs> we spent like 85 hours in the car. Uh, so. I'm very impressed by the kids that they did not murder each other. What did I learn do, driving down in Europe? Well, I learned that it takes a lot of time if you have kids to like establish yourself at the place, checking in, checking out. So believe it or not, I think it's better to drive for longer stints and just shift drivers. You need at least two drivers. 
So the next time we're probably going to do like 24 hours of driving instead and just stop and eat and go, 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 sleep, go, sleep. Uh, because then you get there faster and then you can start a vacation. Uh, also I learned that spending one week of time at every place is a few days too long. I think that four days is about enough in every place if you have your own car because after four days you will have experienced, uh, will have uh, visited most locations nearby and you will have to do like longer drives and that's going to take you more time it's going to cost you money on fuel and tolls road tolls if there is tolls in the country you're visiting how am i doing so far not too boring i hope Alrighty, let's continue the best moment of this trip well i haven't really had the time to like reflect on what happened because i was so busy doing the trip, doing the videos, that I can barely remember where we've been. Especially not while we were driving down. I just have, I have to like watch all the videos. I'm gonna do that in like the winter, like uh, getting some flashbacks. So I think that you guys probably have a better idea of what we have done than we have ourselves. At least I can't remember everything. <laughs> it's quite insane. But I do remember that on the way down, driving through Germany, driving the Volvo V90, the new car on Autobahn was a very nice experience. I enjoyed that so, so much, except for the full brake on the Stau, if you remember, that was kind of chaotic, but the car delivered. I got some more experience as a driver. It was a lot of fun. On the way down in Switzerland, which we were just driving by, we met Moritz uh, at this beautiful lake. Moritz is one of you guys who've been watching the YouTube channel for a long time. Uh, he comments every now and then and he suggested that we should meet and we did and it was awesome I like much more talking to you as a real person than just seeing YouTube comments uh, although I prefer YouTube comments over no comments because human interaction is very important to stay focused and yeah to feel good and energized and so on it was very nice meeting Moritz he got us free lunch Thanks again for that. I tried to pay, but you wouldn't accept. So yeah, free lunch it was. And YouTube can be really awesome that way when it comes to networking, uh, meeting people. On the way down, we drove to Schwarzwald in the southwest of Germany, which is like a 100 kilometer long mountain area, like almost like national park. Very beautiful area. We passed it in like a few hours. Uh, if I had the opportunity, I would spend weeks there because it's so beautiful and it's a lot of things to see. So if you're going to Germany, Southwest End, check out Schwarzwald. Very beautiful. First week down in Italy, we uh, were staying at the Airbnb apartment outside La Spezia in a place called Beverino. La Spezia is located on the western coast of Italy, south of Genoa and north of Pisa. Uh, La Spezia is like a harbor city, um, but they have some small historical center that you can walk around in a visit. They also have Cinque Terre, which I think is on the UNESCO World Heritage list. The five villages like buried into the rocks, uh, very popular for tourists. We spent one full day there. That was really nice. So for the first week, the really nice stuff was Cinque Terre. The weather in Italy, like warm and great, uh, swimming in the Mediterranean, having a beach, really nice experience always, uh, especially for the kids because they haven't been there before. Italian ice cream, gelato, so good, can totally recommend it. We don't have ice cream like that in Sweden, so I'm gonna miss that. The food really good if you go to the right place we ended up in some middle of nowhere farm agriturismo uh, they make their own food they make their own handmade pasta we had some ravioli it was absolutely mwah, molto buono uh, can totally recommend that so if you if you go to italy when you experience like food find yourself an agriturismo with like a place to stay bugs late in the evening here. 
Week two, we spent in Garda, up uh, where the Alp Mountain starts. Very nice location. Uh, we had a pool close to the apartment. I realized that that is a must if you travel with kids because they love swimming. At least our kids love swimming. I don't know about your kids. Maybe they don't like swimming. Garda was very beautiful. Uh, one week of time wasn't quite enough for Garda. But Garda is a big lake, it takes like two hours, maybe three hours to drive around it if there is a bit of traffic. So I would have recommended staying like four days at the south end, four days at the north end and you won't have to drive around as much as we did. But we weren't stressing out, we experienced a lot of things. Uh, and then we had the pearl, the hidden pearl, the lake Lago di Tenno north of Garda, up in the mountains. Whoa, with the Turkish water. Uh, amazing place to fly a drone at. Um, I'm gonna make a separate drone, sim just aerial drone video of Italy at some point, like three minutes, 4K, uh, once I find a good song. If you go to Garda again, bring a bike if you're a cyclist. I did not, people were biking everywhere, driving me nuts, I didn't bring a single bicycling gear and that was hard. I should have brought something. Week three we spent up in the mountains as far north as you can go in Italy. Val Gadena, Ortisei, Runcadizza, Santa Cristina and Selva. This is the place where I did the Hero Dolomites mountain bike race. Uh, the nature is just mind-blowing there. Uh, if you ever have the chance to go to Italy and to experience uh, the Dolomites, which is on the UNESCO World Heritage List, you totally have to do it. It's just, it's so beautiful. The best things from the Alps was like hiking with the family, hang hanging out with my friend Marcus and his family, checking out their cabin, uh, doing a full day of biking downhill only with Marcus. Uh, that was really nice experience, uh, good workout also. And the valleys around the mountains is like a scene from the Shire in Lord of the Rings, everywhere. Just amazing, I love it. The worst moment of the trip? Well, I can't remember anything specifically except for like, crushing my car into that road. New car scraping on the road, yeah that sucked ass to be honest, but I mean things happen, cars are meant to be used. Maybe not abused, but at least used. Also, I think that on the way home in Germany, I might have run a red light. And they have like red light cameras in a lot of places in Germany. So they're probably gonna send me a fine. I Google it, 90 euros, like 900 Swedish crowns. Uh, but I mean, it happens, you learn. New city, new intersection, intersections, crossings, you like, the car in front of me were like 20 meters ahead and he hit the yellow light and I didn't realize until I was like passing the red one. So yeah, it happens. Now it's over and it's done and uh, I will fall back on making like random videos whenever I feel like it and I will focus on the family life and working out and just enjoying myself. Uh, the next mission will be Vasaloppet but not on skis but with my mountain bike, this is like exactly one week time, Saturday, uh, 90 kilometers on the mountain bike. Folk, I hope to do it in less than four hours. I should easily be able to do it in less than four hours because I'm in pretty good shape still. Uh, and I have to be like honest with myself. In life, you should always do things that makes you feel good. And for me, that is not always making YouTube videos, getting views, getting subscribers. Uh, if I have like 100 subscribers or 1 million subscribers, I wouldn't be a happier person. Numbers doesn't make you happy. Not even money makes you happy. You just buy more expensive gear, but if you were miserable before, you will be miserable again once you get used to your new lifestyle. So money is not the solution for feeling better over time. It's practical to have a lot of money, but not important to feel great. Then you're like missing the point of life. Oh, this got deep. <laughs> For me, 
feeling good is hanging out with the family, hanging out with my friends, getting on my bike, just going, watching the sunset out in the forest, like a sensation of freedom. Simple, small things that makes me feel really good. But I've been speaking so much. So now it's time to sum things up. Tell me in the comments, what moments from this summer, summer series of the vlog, did you remember the most? Uh, maybe a place you want to visit, maybe you got inspired from one of the videos that you want to do something. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun making all the videos, but now it's back to work, back to reality. And uh, that will be fun also. So thanks for watching this very long video and uh, you guys take care. Thanks for following. And if you want to follow me, what I'm doing for the upcoming periods of time, you should follow me on Instagram. I put some stuff out on Instagram stories, just glimpses of what's going on when I'm biking, doing stuff, like unedited stuff. And uh, I see you when I see you. Ciao. Also, if we want, you can click here in the previous video.